Oh, righty, I'm starting to get a little bit sleepy and a little bit tired, and I <laughs> probably should have been asleep a few hours ago. It is literally 11.30 at night, and this is not really when I'm usually awake, but I've been up to about uh, 10.40 or so, looking at stuff on the internet particularly vans. Now, when I first come across all this van dwelling shit, it was actually Tony Mullins that uh, dragged me into all this sort of stuff, and I never even knew who all this travels was initially. Um, but, uh, you know, being a trucker at the time, he himself, um, you know, wasn't a great deal different from uh, Van Dwellers in that way that he's, you know, living uh, on the road and whatnot. But a um, few things have sort of happened and uh, whatnot, a few changes in circumstances, uh, namely the, the fact that I'm probably going to be making quite a lot of weekend trips uh, in the search for a uh, nice young black woman. And because I just don't live in that area, you know, it's like a three and a half hour drive from where I work. And you start looking at hotel costs and, oh, holy shit, they're going to mount to the fucking moon before long. You know, and if I find a suitable girl and I start sort of, you know, going up there on a more regular basis or something like that, um... You know, you don't necessarily want to impose on them and sleep in their house. And, well, I'm certain that uh, the father-in-law probably wouldn't be down with that. And, uh, bloody moths. Bloody moths attracted by the light of the phone. And, uh, you know, you don't really want to impose on them. So, and you really question how much you want to pay in motel fees and, I know it wouldn't take very long for it to mount up, and I mean fucking badly mount up, because, uh, well, we don't have <laughs> motel fucking six or eight or whatever the fuck it is, where you, you know, you guys pay like a lousy 40 US dollars, like our flea bag motels are still, oh, fuck me, they're over 80 US dollars in most cases, and these are the shitbox ones. You know. So I sort of... I originally, you know, come into this whole scenario to fight e uh, You know, and sort of... That was where I come from, realising that a lot of these van dwelling communities... You know, in case, in case there isn't one arsehole bloody e-beggar in the off-grid community, well, guess what? The van community is like fucking absolutely saturated beyond belief with e beggars. And uh, that was what initially drew me to it all, but it was really Tony that got me onto it. But as time goes on, you sort of, you know, think, oh, what do I need a van for? But it's not just the fact that I've got excess cash on my hands, and let's face it, I fucking do. Um, and. You know, sometimes I think, oh, it'd be nice to go away weekends just once in a while. But I realised I'm going to have to go away weekends on a regular basis if I'm ever going to really, you know, get a girl at, at this rate. Uh, and, you know, during this time of the year, it's, it's probably not appropriate for me just to get one at the drop of a hat. Um, but during this time of year particularly around Christmas, would you believe it, our industry actually slows up. And it's to do with it being too hot. Uh, it, it's larger constructions, you, you have issues with expansion-related stuff and, and heat-related stuff with uh, concrete not being setting too fast and it causes cracking and you know, other things that expand and stuff that shouldn't be expanding. When you're dealing with these 
sort of supersized constructions that our clients deal with. So in essence, a lot of things slow the fuck up. Uh, and this happened last year. It was like bad. They were, you know, so I might be volunteering to take four days a week so I can uh, have a bit more time uh, looking around in the right area for a, a nice young black woman who uh, hopefully has that Aboriginal mindset of, uh, you know, ease of ability to be friendly and talk, not stuck up and uh, non-materialistic, which is some of the traits that they have, but uh, they also are great at wearing mismatched clothes and mismatched socks and things like that. But at the end of the day, I don't think that really matters if a girl loves you. Uh, because let's face it, you know, God damn it, you look at me wearing some of the stuff that I've sewn and <laughs> who am I to fucking whinge about uh, someone wearing odd socks? <laughs> but anyway, getting to the point, um, some of these vans are cheap and some of them are expensive and I've sort of narrowed it down searching through uh, this car sales website we have you know, one of the main ones for buying and selling cars in Australia, and, and you'd be fucking shocked. You know, there's ones that you look at and you go, holy shit, you know, they want like 20 grand. And then you start looking at some of these other ones, you know, and you, you're going, oh, that price ain't bad at all. And, I mean, they're really good. And there's some that are a bit more like your Honda Odyssey or your Toyota Sienna now. I'm not getting a Honda Odyssey because apparently they've got real arsehole transmissions that are just too weak in them. Um, and, you know, but all the same, I've, I've looked at some of these ones that are, oh, you know, some of the Toyota ones, they go for astronomical distances with these things. But the price tag's very high with it, you know. And... Um, there's some vehicles that they have, but they don't have a great deal of them, um, you know. And but there's some that they do have a few of, and they're out there and they're getting around, but they're sort of quite well priced. And I found that there's a particular one that I used to know because when I was first in the building industry back when I was, you know, only, you know, well, fuck at one point there, I was still a teenager, but. Um, Used to work for this guy on school holidays and then sort of worked on and off for him for, oh, you know, about 2004 or something like that. And um, long story short, um, he had one of these Ford commercial vans called the Econo van. Oh, they could not fucking name it better, Econo. Fuck me, they are the most basic pieces of shit you've ever seen. Like... You couldn't make a vehicle more simple. You know, you look in the back, you know, bare steel or plywood bottom. You know, you've, you've got masonite sides covering in the, you know, they're, they're just actually bare fucking masonite covering in part of the sides, you know. They've got no windows in a good part of it because they just sort of put like a steel panel in place with like a seal around there, almost like it was meant to have glass, but they just put like a steel piece in instead of the actual glass. Um, because I gather that there's one out there. I don't know what it is, but it's like a people mover version. But there's not many of them. There's more of the commercial ones. Um, and, you know, you look at the door and it's the fucking shittest door you've seen in your life. I mean, it's just like this little, almost like one of those shitty little strap handle fucking handles to close the door. You know, and it, it's all very tacky sort of a machine. The seats are just sponge foam crap. No springs in them, you know. Fuck that. Just straight up sponge foam. <laughs> and that's it, you know. But you look at the price tag and you get some of these that are... I'm shocked, really, that some of them are built to, you know, 2001 models. And they want, you know, three and a half thousand dollars. And they look beautiful. You know, some of them are, are, you know, tacky. But this 2001 model, they sort of changed the front a little bit. And you look at it and it, it's fucking flawless. Like, it looks like they've been polishing this thing. You know, and 
What's the price? Three and a half thousand dollars. Well, what's that work out in US dollars? You look about two thousand seven hundred US or something like this. You know, it's fucking peanuts. You know, absolutely fucking peanuts. You know, and although it's drab, it's it's very cheap. There's another one called the Hyundai Trajet. Now a lot of these are around 2001, 2002, um, and they you know, it's, it is a Hyundai. It's not a great machine. It's a six-cylinder, which is surprising, considering the size of it. But it's actually not too bad a size. Apparently, you can take all the seats out, like the whole lot of them, except the two front seats. Your driver and your front passenger. The rest of them you can take out, and you'll find a lot of vans are actually like that. I've found out in due course. Um, but, you know, you could definitely fit in the back of this. It's got a particular engine. I'm really questioning if it's not the same engine they put in a certain Kia that's a chronic fucking pain in the ass. 40% of them died in the first six months from you. You know, it, it's a one-made Rover, as in Land Rover. Um, and, you know, it's just... I really wonder if it's actually Hyundai engine or this damn Rover thing like the Kia's got. Uh, because if it is, it's not worth touching. But these are automatic, you know, and, and they're, you know, very cheap as well. They're even less. They're probably about 2,200 US or something like that. You know, some of them are quite all right. Um, you've got another thing which is a little bit like the, Hyundai, uh, the Honda Odyssey or the Toyota Sienna, which we don't have Toyota Siennas over here, um, but it's, it's called the... Uh, Holden Zafira, which is, you probably know it as a Chev Zafira. And they're a bit like the Toyota Tercel of the 80s sort of thing. It's, it's a, one of the, it's like a van that's got a hood on the front of it type thing, you know. And, um, yeah. They, I think you can take all the seats out of those as well, and they're fucking cheap as dirt, them things. And you look at some of them, and, just, you know, they're, they're very tacky, like you hop in the cabin and you're going, oh, shit, this looks plasticky, and you can just tell the, the seats are sort of fairly cheap. You know, but it's not a bad little machine, you know. It's it's not real quality. But then again, I mean, neither is the Hyundai. I mean, it's got to be better quality than the friggin' Hyundai. Um, but if you can take all the seats out of that thing, you know, they're, they're not huge and they do look fucking tacky as some of these GMs of the early thousands did. A lot of these are like 2003, 2004, uh, but they're going for good prices and you look at the mileage and I'll be fucked black and blue if a lot of these things are done under 65,000 miles. I'm not fucking joking. Like... Like, you won't find any that are... I'll put it like this. You're not going to find any over 120,000 miles. Um, and, and that's for certain. And I'm seeing ones that are basically, you know, 65,000 miles and stuff like this. And I'm like, holy shit. And the price, you know, same thing once again, you're probably paying two and a half, 2,600 US for some of these things. And it's like, fuck me, this is nothing. Look at it. And look, like 65,000 miles. You'd be fucking joking. What the fuck is that old that's only done 65,000 miles? Look, there's a lot of life left in that shit, you know. And one of the most interesting of all that they... You know, they're 3,000, a lot of these things. It, and, you know, they're, they're around three, 4,000. Honestly speaking, you know, you wouldn't pay two and a half. You'd probably only pay 2,200 US uh, because a lot of these are around the $3,000 mark. Is that thing like minivan Vince got, you know, that goggle-eyed and the old of fucking whatever her name is, that chick that everyone wants to shag, but she's like, eyes are boggling out of her head. You know, that bitch, you know, I feel she'd be insane. But anyway, some guys think she's hot. I can tell you right now, there's a lot of girls a lot hotter than that in this country. But anyway, 
that little machine he got, Suzuki APV is what they call it over here. They are, you know, most of them under two and a half thousand US. Uh, I do realise there's one that seen when I go home. Um, there seems to be a guy who goes home from his job at the same time as me as I'm going along the freeway, and I often see a little white one of those running along. They are very small engine in those things. Um, a lot of those are done quite a, uh, you know, they've they've really much more than, um, you know, a hundred thousand. They might be up to one hundred and thirty-five thousand miles. Uh, you know, maybe 140, but most of them are done fairly good mileage, and and you know they're not going to be any more than about two and a half thousand US. They're probably one of the cheapest vans that you can come across. That's actually Japanese made type van, you know, and um, and I tell you what, it looks a whole lot better than this bloody Ford. Damn it, I forgot. I didn't check the Mazda, the Ford version, the the cheap Ford commercial I was saying about. They're based directly on a Mazda, and I fucking forgot to even look it up, and I didn't even think of looking up Mazda vans. Looked up fucking Toyota, or looked up fucking even Nissan, for fuck's sake, who makes almost no vans. And uh, even Hyundai there, but not the Mazda. Damn it. So I'll have to look up that, because there's a lot more, I think, of those Mazda ones out there than the Ford ones. Um, well, there may not be, but they were the. It's it's just basically Ford got it as a rebadge, uh, and the original really is a, a Mazda. But um, but anyway, these little Suzuki APVs, you can tell they're quite a lot better built than this, uh, you know, Mazda Ford rebadge, a van thing. Like quite a lot more built, uh, better built, you know, because it's a Japanese machine, but. When I see them, like, they're absolutely fucking tiny. Uh, and, you know, the photos aren't... <laughs> the photos look like, a, well, a van in the photo. And, you know, you really need somebody standing next to them or getting in them to give you a good comparison. Like, you need to look at a YouTube review, not just a few photos on a website. Uh, and then you start realising that, you know, it's probably because they're so damn small. But this one I saw there, a guy had an actual bed in the back of it. You'd be surprised at how many times you look at some of these blooming vans and the photos show you that guy's got a mattress in the back or whatever already. So people are starting to catch on to the van dwelling idea over here a bit too. And by the way, it's not only not illegal, it's actually bloody encouraged. It's actually like a tourism point in this country. You know, they're going, oh, the snowbirds are going to come type of thing. We call them grey nomads over here for lack of snow. Um, but, you know, people actually, they actually want van dwellers to go to their town in the hope that you, but they've got like one month limit on staying in some of these places so you don't just end up living there forever. But, um, yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, that's, um, I don't know if I could really fit in something that small, but I'm one of these crazy mofos that could and probably would build an actual full fucking shower, full-size shower with a fold-up shower base. I've got it half worked out how to do it already, actually, complete with an S-Bend and everything in a van. Um, but the other thing here is that... Look, we have caravan parks, and, and I once, you know, I was talking about investments to TM privately in emails, and he said, caravan parks is a good idea. You know, you might be able to set one up in the front of your place. You know, cut off the front 10 acres of your property and set it up as a caravan park, and it's a great little money spinner. Over here, there's so many people free camping in proper RVs and vans that the caravan joints lose out. And it's only the people with low equipped vans and stuff, not like my parents who have got like the full one with the built in washing machine and the whole fucking lot. I mean, their one is something else. And they paid a price tag that was fucking something else as well for it. Uh, but <laughs> it was a price. But, anyways, they're, 
you know, they've got a full washing machine in these. I mean, like, it's a full fucking automatic washing machine in these. Now, there's people who have a normal van and they don't have a full automatic washing machine. But I have, in fact, seen people with, like, a platform bolted on the back of one and quite obviously a washing machine under it and a custom-built tarp to cover the washing machine. Um, but there's people who, you know, have got vans who don't have built-in washing machines and that. And what they'll do is they'll free camp at all these different places, as the the phrase is over here. You know, the, you call it boondocking, we call it free camping. Um, and it's only when they need to use all the washing machines and stuff like that. Um, you know, some of these facilities that go to a caravan park. And ultimately, you know, I would be able to be in a caravan park because you've got your whole toilet block and your laundry set up and all that. And I don't need a laundry set up, you know, but just to have your share and your toilet there, I could be in a very small van with a share and toilet in a caravan park. And all of a sudden you, you go from like, you know, 120, 140 a night Aussie dollars um, down to like 30 bucks a night, 40 bucks a night, you know, and, and your costs drop to like one third versus being in a motel just by being in a van, you know, and if it's hot weather and it's really hot, you know, you might want an AC, which means you probably should be in a motel, but, but if a fan's good enough, well, yeah, no worries, i got a fan. Hell, I've got a cordless one that runs on cordless drill batteries and it's quite an all right fan. You know, but I'd probably rig something off the 12 volt battery. Uh, but I've even worked out if I got something larger, like there's a long wheelbase version of that Ford van, and if I find one of the Mazda ones of it or something like that, uh, I didn't see any there tonight. But if I find some out there in the real world, you know, uh, the long wheelbase, I'm not joking, it would not be unrealistic to have a full size shower base inside the back of the damn van, along with, you know, a, a good. Oh, what we'd say, maybe nearly 10-gallon tank in the bastard or something. Um, I don't know that you'd have a, uh, anyway, hang on, I'm trying to do my math. Oh, no, it'd be more than 10-gallon. Oh, shit, yeah. Uh, it wouldn't be a 100-gallon. You'd probably get a 50-gallon tank inside the back of it. Uh, along with a full-size shower base and a shower curtain. And I've worked out how I can actually fold the shower base up to the side uh, along with the curtain so you can sort of fold it away. Uh, and as crazy as I am, I've, I've worked out how to fucking do it already uh, because I'm Link and I work out crazy shit rather quickly, uh, especially if it's fairly technical. Um and yeah, you know, and and that's that would not be unrealistic. And if you have baffles uh, in your tank, then you've got no problems with things rocking. Um, yeah, but it's just a bit of a thought, you know. And there's a couple other things that I think in the future some of these things might be a, a grand idea too. Uh, where I work, you know, I'm, I'm probably, the road I'm going, I'm probably going to be there for a few years. You know, I had a rough day a couple months ago there, but it's probably not unrealistic to think that I might be there for a few more years. What I have noticed is that the traffic is just, I don't think I'm leaving later. I think the traffic's just getting fucking worse at times, you know. And I've had a few bungles. There's one that I haven't uploaded where... Uh, Oh, you know, I basically missed a day of work because some guy who, even later, they don't know who it was. They never identified the guy. He's most likely a vagrant or a drug addict or homeless or something. Decided to do some astronomical stunt and run over a freeway and uh, got fucking hit and killed. And what do they do? Do they close down just, you know, between one exit and the next? Oh, fuck no. They close down the entire freeway for fucking next five exits, didn't they? Of course they fucking did, because it's Australia and the fucking cops will do stupid shit like that. Fucked everyone over. I lost, I lost the whole day at work. I ended up getting stuck going a half mile and it took me fucking half an hour to go... No, it was half an hour to go a quarter mile. I'm not joking. 
And so I gave up and ended up out of some uh, very wealthy end of town uh, sitting around a fucking fancy ass park with the uh, whole big blooming well, a lake thing set up there and all this fancy shit and a lot of uh, very high-end apartments and snobs walking around, particularly uh, wealthy Indians and Chinese. Um, (laughs) You know, and sure as eggs, something else happened a little bit later and, you know, I was coming up. You know, this is only like a week later... What happens? Well, some fucking person rolled a car on the freeway. So what did they do? Oh, you you wouldn't fucking believe what they done. They closed down... Not the first exit before it, or the exit where it more or less happened, you know, or the one in front of it. All the one in front of that, they, they closed them, fucking piles them down. And, I mean, I'm not joking. It was so far back where they closed it that I got diverted through country town to fucking get to work. I'm not joking. I was driving through fucking paddocks, for God's sake, because it was that far up the damn freeway that it was not even inside the bloody... The crash was inside the edge of the city... And where they closed the freeway was fucking in between two cities, for God's sake. You couldn't make this shit up. You know, the fucking bullshit they do here. I don't know how much distance you need to fucking check out a rolled vehicle. Honestly, you know, what do you need? You know, like a fucking quarter mile, a half mile? We'll try about, you know, fucking 20-something miles, you know? It's like, fuck me, these people are just being assholes. These cops are just... They love closing this road down. This freeway, they close it down, everything's fucked, you know, nothing moves. And when it happens, you know, almost every damn week, oh, man, you fucking wonder. I was damn lucky that I come up, and as I could see the traffic, I'm not saying they closed the traffic 20 miles back, but it was banked back about, you know, 15 miles or more at least. And I was lucky to see that where they'd closed it, somehow there was back up of like 15 miles or something like this or, or you know it was a, it was a fair heap of miles and as I noticed the traffic banking up I was getting right near an exit so I pulled right over out to this exit and and a lot of other cars are doing the same and I followed them and we got to the edge of the capital and I deliberately knew from working there honest to God back in 2004 some of these back streets and shit and like not the back streets but some of the main runs in some of these outer areas and i managed to get as far away as i could i got several miles away from where the actual accident was before i sort of went what is it east to manage to get to work and uh thank god for google maps i'll tell you what I sort of had a good feeling I know where I was going, though, because I'd worked there in, back in 2004. And you wouldn't believe it. Some of the same shops in the same places. I remember the same roads. They are building new parts of the, the, the place, but uh, putting in another suburb or two there But because uh, it's on the outer edges of the city. But, um, you know, I was talking to the guy at work who's married to the Vietnamese woman, and there's a place that is was up for sale. I think they got a bit of trouble selling it. It's actually inside like a a very small trailer park, so to speak, but it's all portable cabins. It's all like you fucking... You got a name from in the US because you got so many of them. We don't have that many of them here. Um, Or not as many as the US. Like your double wide type thing. You know what I'm saying? Um your transportable buildings that they put on the back of a a fucking semi or whatever and they move, you know. Basically, one of them, right smack near where he is, which is literally like fucking two miles from work, and he lives half a mile from where the traffic banks up, and in that next half a mile, it's absolutely fucking crawling pace. Like, all the time, doesn't matter what time you leave, unless you leave at, like, fucking... 
3 a.m. or something, you know, it's it's going to be very slow there. Um, and, you know, he, he's only like two miles away from work, but it takes him 10 minutes to get that two miles, you know. Um, but <laughs> so many times all these accidents and fuck-ups are, are before where he is. And even other times I've been to work, all the pranks seem to be before he... And he misses a whole fucking lot of them because he's in that last little stretch there even though it's some of the heaviest traffic part, all the accidents happen before that. But he'll always be behind them. So he, he goes through sort of, you know, a freeway for literally a mile before getting off the freeway. Um, and, you know, that's where all the fuck-ups happen is that freeway, but he's only in that last mile before we turn off to work. Uh, so, you know, he's sort of... Um, you know, before we get off the exit that goes to work. So he's sort of right. And, and here they are with, like, this double-wide thing in this miniature little trailer park that's no trailers, they're just double-wides. And I think it's 92 bucks a week or 100 bucks a week, something like that. I think it's 90 bucks a week Australian, which, you know, you're probably looking at, like, maybe, like, well, 62 US or something like that. Um, per week, and I, th I don't know if that includes all your, uh, you know, your electricity bill, but I think it includes your water and stuff like that. Um, but you got to put down fifty thousand, which is, oh, what the fuck's that end up being? Oh, uh, probably about thirty-five thousand US or something like that. You got to put down, um, maybe thirty-seven thousand. US, you got to put down to um, basically, quote unquote, buy this place, and then you've got to keep paying that money. But you sort of look at that and you think, flame and hell, you know what? Like, that would put you right in the middle of everything, and it would save you from getting stuck in all these traffic fuck ups. And then I sit there going, well, holy smoke, you could get an actual, like, that's 50,000 Aussie dollars, and you're still paying. 90 bucks a week, Aussie, and for 25 to 30 thousand dollars, I can get myself an actual fucking bus that is like, honest to God, like 2010, 2011 model. You know, and this thing has a huge, an absolute massive engine in the damn thing. In actual fact, the engine in these bloody things is slightly bigger. Then the one in me, man, uh, me dad's backhoe that has a 26 and a half foot boom on the fucking backhoe. And the engine in these buses is fucking larger than that thing. And so you could literally carry an entire IBC full of fucking water for your showers in the back of this thing. Honestly. And it would be cheaper. So you start thinking, well, hang on a minute. Let's think a bit smarter here. If this does get to be a real problem, I could always start van dwelling at least during the week, um, you know, nearer to work. Uh, especially if these tend to, you know, maybe not now, but in, in future if these bullshit crashes and stuff get bad, yeah, maybe it's an option I want to consider, you know. There's a trick to it all. You get your gym membership, and what you do is you have a share at the gym, uh, and there's also public, uh, there's also pools that you can get memberships to. And a lot of people like to have a shower to wash all the chlorine off themselves. And I've actually used that one myself at times where, you know, the old hot water system here just doesn't cut it sometimes because it's got a stuck, it's the temperature's stuck on it. Uh, and as you come up to winter on occasion, yeah, I go to a particular pool that you pay to get into to use these showers in there. That has happened before. Um, particularly when I was working at the chicken plant, I was doing that a lot. Um, and, you know, the fact is that, uh, well, all you need is a gym membership and there's a lot of gym places around. And that gets you your shower. And if you need a little, one of those little blooming portable toilet things, not one of those god-awful buckets with a plastic bag in it, but one of the other ones that I also don't like. 
my sister's got one. Um, but uh, what are those things? You know, I might have to have one of those as a bit of a uh, backup if I have a van. Not that I'll be using it. You know, it's not uncommon for me to have a shit at work anyway. So, but um, yeah. And I've also noticed the odd truck stop has showers here, but there's not many of them that have showers. But there are some truck stops that, quite honestly, they've got a lot of parking and you could really just park in them overnight and you'd probably, you know, be fine. And the fact is that I could park out the front of work and they wouldn't give a shit. They would not care less. If I disappeared to the gym for a few hours and, uh, you know... Then went to the supermarket to get myself a bit of cheap food or whatever and eat a bit of food and fluff around on me phone for a while. And then, you know, when I know that it's about 7 o'clock at night or whatever, we'll just trundle back and I'll just park out the front of work on the grass and they wouldn't give a crap. They really wouldn't mind at all. Um, so in terms of, you know, where you got to... I mean, there's that many fucking trucks and shit parked around work anyway. Um, but the trucks ain't going to jump up on the uh, on the nature strip. There is no sidewalk there, but there's a good strip of grass there. And I park my car up there quite a bit in the mornings, waiting for the other guy to come and unlock the gate. Um, so, you know, it wouldn't mean anything to just do the same with the van. At least I get to fucking sleep in a bit more. There's someone else that, uh, oh, I'm not going to really name names here, but just someone I know who's been married for like 10 or 11 years or some shit, and, uh, you know, they've, uh, I think at times, you know, the marriage is good enough, but at times I think uh, this guy wants a bit of uh, space and... <laughs> You know, it's uh, not great having screaming kids running everywhere and stuff like that. And I think it's given him a break from uh, married life. But he's sort of, uh, he's different because he's got his own uh, office. But, um, you know, he sleeps in his office in a different city from where his wife is. And, uh, you know, I think that, that degree of separation... Um, you know, means the marriage, uh, they're not cramping each other's style all the time because they have that bit of time apart by being in separate cities type thing. You know, and they see each other sort of, uh, you know, often enough, like every month, definitely, um, you know, and uh, all the kids and all that seem and whatnot, but it, it's sort of like... If the traffic was extremely bad and I was married, you know, 10 years and, and whatnot and I was still working in the capital, uh, it might be a bad idea to, you know, come over to the wife and kids on the weekend. Um, but, you know, if the traffic was extremely bad or the marriage was a little bit stale on it, you know, to, to be van dwelling uh, during the week, um, you know, and... Uh, I sort of see the, this guy's angle, and his wife doesn't mind, you know, it's all good, and and it's sort of, um, you know, it's sort of, uh, I think it does their relationship good in the situation they're in, and I sort of see that, you know, if I ever got in a, a relationship that was very stale, but I didn't want a divorce or anything like that, you know, that sort of, that few days apart sort of... Uh, you know, it gives you a bit of breathing space, you know what I'm saying? Not that I'd be disappearing for a month like this guy does, but all the same, you know, it's sort of, um, yeah, just thoughts. Thoughts and all these things, but I look at, you know, the cash I've got, and if I end up, I'm going to go to these areas and just go to motels, and we'll see how we go. And if things go and I find a nice girl and it, it's going to take a while with a relationship and I've got to spend a lot of weekends up there. Well, I'll spend a lot of weekends up there, but I won't be spending them, you know, paying top dollar uh, in motels. And, you know, like, honest to God, like, these motels, the fucking cost of them, like, 
if you spent 20 and definitely 30 days in a motel, it would actually be cheaper to have a fucking van. <laughs> you know, and you just sort of think, shit, even if you could get a shower at this girl's place or at one of the truck stops up there or whatever, you could live entirely in the van, you know, and just hang around with her on the weekends. The old cat might miss me a little bit, but, you know, I'll be here during the week, so... But just, you know, I'm just sort of looking at these options that I've got there and, uh, you know, I've got a lot of things worked out, dual battery systems and all this sort of stuff. And, and it's amazing how in this world with excessive amounts of gyms that, oh, we buy gym equipment, rent a building and bingo, you know, and they, you know, <laughs> well, you know, the options are out there, the competition's fierce and, and there's your shower taken care of if you don't build one into a van. And if I do, what am I gonna to need to do? Go to some of these truck stops because they always have water fill up points half the time, quite a lot of the time at these joints. You know, there's another little stunt too that, that is another one that I'm sure I could work out. And that is that some of these local governments have watering things for the government workers to water trees and fuck around, but they don't put like a normal tap on them they got this modified fucking handle that's like a curve, like a triangle with rounded edges. Now, I could make one of them damn things and use and just engineer one and use their bloody taps if I can't find a tap. The reality is a lot of places you can find taps, though, uh, especially these truck stops, you know, and that would give me a bit of shower water and stuff like that. I'm not saying you want to cook with water that's gone through a rubber hose, but... But uh, at least to give me a bit of shower water if I had a van big enough to have a shower. There's a trick that over here, they, they got a, a thing that's, with the national parks in particular, my parents were telling me that they have this thing where you must be self-contained. So some of the newer vans, they actually have a grey water tank that's like a substantial size. So as big as you can fill up, um, your main tank, your grey water tank will be the same size type thing, um, maybe even a slightly bigger. And it means that all your shower water and everything, you carry your shower water with you. And they say, well, you can have a self-contained van in this this park because, you know, you, you take all your rubbish with you, you don't dump any water there, you don't do anything. Um, and my parents have got theirs set up so I can go out of hose and they've actually managed to talk one of them in and said, well, you know, we can actually put a bucket there because we've got these, you know, big buckets and, you know, and then we'll we'll carry our water away like that. And they said, oh, yeah, right, yeah. Okay, then. So, of course, what do my parents do? Creep out there late at night and just pour it out on the frickin' grass. No one knew the difference anyway. <laughs> but they got this thing about, oh, well, we've got to be self-contained, you know, but just with national parks, though just with these environmentally sensitive areas, the Aboriginal, you know, lands and all this sort of thing, you know, they're all very funny about it. And, you know, oh, we don't want to muck anything up. you got to take away everything. We don't want, you know, you're just dumping water out in the ground. They could easily set up a, a basic bloody, like a septic there to take the grey water. But no, they're not going to. Um, and, you know, the long and short of it is that uh, a lot of these new events do have the self-contained thing to hold the grey water. But what they've got is they've got like a little a stopcock, like a ball valve type thing on them. So they'll turn the little tap on, and, it, you know, my father was saying, he talked to some guys, and, oh, what do you do to empty it? Oh, that's no big deal. What you do is you just turn the little ball valve on, just so it's just a slow drip, just as you're about to leave to where you're going, or, you know... Well, basically, that's what you do. You just you got your engine running already, and you go out, and she's all hooked up. You're all ready to take off, and you just go out, and you just turn it on just so it starts just barely just dripping, and uh, or just a very you know just a very slow drip. And then what you do is you start driving, and by the time you get to the next town, guess what? You don't have any water in your grey water tanks anymore. <laughs> surprise, surprise, you know. So I sort of keep that in mind that I could probably easily have a self-contained system and have that same thing, you know, 
And uh, so long as I didn't get carried away with it, you know, you could uh, always be watering the grass at the front of work because it's usually looking fucking half screwed in the summer anyway. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, just a few uh, little minor thoughts. But I'm obsessive with having me showers. You know, I'm not going to be a do a Elvis travels and go without a shower for three days. And fuck that shit. You know, people say off grid is oh, well they they don't mind missing the odd shower here and there. It's no big deal. No, it fucking is to me. But anyway, I think it's about quarter past twelve, so we uh, better leave it at that. And that's uh, a forty-five-minute long waffle on van life.